I'm Chef Joe. Thanks for tuning in to my Derby Special. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to be preparing nine dishes that will help you get through Derby easily, effectively, and very quickly. While we move to the kitchen, we'll get busy with my brother-in-law, Lonnie Donahue, my wife, Kathleen, and my dear brother, John. My wife, Kathleen, and I have made it back to the kitchen, and we're going to give you three things that make it easy and nutritional for breakfast. I'm going to make a breakfast salad. Then we're going to do a breakfast sandwich. It's simple, very sophisticated. And then Kathleen, she's going to make a cinnamon coffee cake. What you're going to need to prepare this salad is we're going to have a mango, papaya, granola, bananas, your choice of berries. You're going to need some vanilla yogurt, an orange, lemon, and some salad greens. I wanted to give you an idea of what to look for when you're buying a mango or papaya or banana. Make sure it's got some brown spots on it. You're looking for that. You know how bananas are ripe when they have that brown hue? Look for that. They're ripe then. We've got all of our fruit chopped up just the way we like it, and really all we need to do is make a dressing. I've got some raspberries here. I'm going to take a back of a spoon, just mash these up. Now that our raspberries are mashed, we need to get the juice in there. Anytime you juice a piece of fruit, you want to break those membranes up a little bit. Just roll it just like this. And we'll cut it in half and give it a good squeeze. To our raspberry and juice mixture, we're going to take some yogurt and fold that right in. We'll just blend this together. Use a spoon or a wire whisk, it really doesn't matter. The most important part about cooking is you've got to taste things as you go. What I'm looking for here is in our yogurt dressing is the nice mellow edge of the orange and the zesty edge of the lemon. It tastes great. Now we can prepare our salad. We're going to take our salad greens and really just dump everything in. And with our dressing, I was taught very differently. It's best to toss these things. Mix them up. Let's get everything seasoned with that yogurt. And the whole idea behind this salad is hopefully it gives you everything you need if breakfast is the only meal you eat that day. Now next, if this isn't enough, let's make a sandwich, an egg sandwich. You need some simple ingredients for this. You're going to need some spinach, bacon, cheese, you can use Parmesan, mozzarella, this is Jack, onions, eggs. This is brioche, but you could use Wonder Bread. It doesn't matter. Just have a nice piece of bread you can cut a circle out of. First in, we'll add the bacon. This is into a nice hot pan, because we're going to saute this. And saute, again, you guys know by now, it means to jump. So you need a hot pan. Now, if you notice, there's a ton of fat in there. Let's get rid of some of that. And we'll take our onions and saute that right into our bacon. We've sauteed these onions for about two to three minutes. I want to leave some crunch in there so there's texture in our sandwich. From there, we'll add some spinach. And once we get that in the pan, we're just going to melt it down. This is going to take maybe 60 seconds. Now we're going to take our bread and we're going to toast this up on one side. We're going to take a little bit of butter, about a tablespoon, melt it into our pan. Just set our bread right on top of that stuff. We're going to toast one side, then we'll add an egg to this. Once we get our eggs in our toast, we'll finish it in the oven. And for a medium yolk, it's going to take about three minutes. If you want a hard yolk, go the full five. All right, all of our elements are together. Now we can assemble our sandwich. Finally, we'll take an egg. We'll set this right on top. Now that alone is a beautiful sandwich, in my opinion. But we're going to take it a little further. You got some picket de gallo around the house? Who doesn't love fresh tomatoes? You could even add a little Bloody Mary mix to this. If you need that sweet edge to any perfect brunch, my wife's getting ready to prepare a cinnamon coffee cake. And this is one that sparks a memory in me. I never forgot it the second I tasted it. Let's get with her and see how this works. Well, I chose cinnamon coffee cake. It's always been one of my favorite. It stays moist for about three days. And if you want to, you can even bake it a week in advance and freeze it, pull it out that morning. It starts with a streusel topping, butter, sugar, flour, cinnamon, and a pinch of salt. All right, Joe, first thing we start with is some sugar and flour. Then we add cinnamon, the butter, and just a pinch of salt. Then we're going to turn on the mixer and let it beat until it comes together like a streusel. 
Now that we're done with the streusel, we can make the cake. First, we have butter, sugar, salt, eggs, baking powder, flour, sour cream, milk, and vanilla. Make sure we have all the ingredients incorporated. We're going to pour this into a half sheet pan that's been lined with parchment paper, greased and floured. Spread it out. Now we're going to add the streusel topping. You want to bake this at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. When the cake is done, it should look something like this. That looks great. And all this food is making me hungry. Why don't we sit down and we can take a look at all this food together on one table. Okay. Over the last five minutes, we prepared three dishes. I think they'll get you through a great breakfast during Derby. We made a breakfast salad with bananas, granola, and berries. A breakfast sandwich with an egg, bacon, and spinach and cheese. And Kathleen, you made? I made cinnamon coffee cake and a summer fruit coffee cake made with raspberries. Now, if this isn't enough to get you through the whole day, my brother-in-law, Lonnie Donahue, and myself, we're going back to the kitchen now. And we're going to make crazy things like a derby pie smoothie. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and I'm joined with my brother-in-law. We're lucky enough to have this man, Lonnie Donahue. And we're going to do the bar segment of this. you got to have fun food around. We're the guys to give it to you. And the first thing we're going to do is make a derby pie smoothie. Take some ice. Put our milk on top of that. And finally, we add the derby pie, turn it on, and blend this up. Now that we have this pureed, we'll go ahead and serve it. And since we have something to drink now, we're going to go ahead and head over to the range with Lonnie and get ready to cook. I depend on Lonnie for so many things, a great laugh <laughs> and great food, and he's brought some great things here. What's the first thing you're going to make today? Today we're going to do an imperial shrimp roll. The reason I like to do this, Joe, is you can make it ahead of time, you can freeze them, and get them done very quickly. Next we're going to add the ground beef and ground pork. We're going to brown those lightly. Next we're going to add soy sauce, fish sauce, and sake. You want to take those and let them just infuse into the meat. Next we're going to add garlic, ginger, and chopped water chestnuts. We want to cook those about a minute. Now that the meat is about two-thirds of the way cooked, we're going to take that and put it into a separate bowl. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add the cilantro, bean sprouts, crab meat, mung bean thread or cellophane noodles, and green onions, chopped fine. You want to add this while the product is still warm, and what it's going to do is help infuse flavor into the product. After the ingredients are all mixed, we're going to take our lumpia rolls, and we're going to cut them about one-third at both ends, and just remove the triangles. Separate your egg roll skins. What you want to do at this point is now fold one-third down, and seal it with a little bit of your whipped egg. Next, we're going to take and put uh, one shrimp that's been peeled and deveined, green headless 2125. Set that right dead center with the tail sticking out. Then we're going to take and put some of our mixture, about a half a tablespoon. You can make them a little bit larger if you want to. Goes right in the middle, right on top of the tail. Next, we're going to take and fold the end segment up, bring it up towards half to the product. Seal it with egg mixture, and then we're going to seal off the product. Make sure that you get it tight around the tail area, because if not, the fat will get in it and it will blow. Seal it. Once you get the product done, flip it over, and just merely seal on the opposite side. The nice thing about the Imperial Shrimp Rolls is you can take them, you can freeze them for up to one week and then merely pull them out and fry them. Fry them at 350 degrees until golden brown. And that'll be enough for me, Lonnie. And um, after these, what am I going to eat? <laughs> next, we're gonna, uh, next, we're going to be doing some scallops with uh, avocado and corn salsa. So we got plenty of food coming All up. All right, let's get busy here. Lonnie, I haven't tried this yet, but from the looks of the ingredients, I really like what I see. How are we going to put this together? Well, first, we're going to go ahead and make our corn and avocado salsa, Joe. We've got our corn, I mean our avocado chopped up medium dice. We're going to add our white corn and yellow corn. Next, we're going to add the red onion, red pepper, 
cilantro, chopped jalapeno, garlic, oregano, cumin, and hot pepper flakes. Mix the ingredients together, and then you want to add our olive oil and fresh squeezed lime juice. And this is best if it sets at least one hour, and it's even better on the third day. Joe, whenever I was thinking of this dish, I thought it would be nice to have some scallops with it. Why well, don't I go ahead and get those cooked for you, and we'll put okay. this together. Okay, no. okay, in a hot skillet, all we need to do is sear these, and what we're going to look for is caramelization on these. There's something about that nutty brown character that's important. So we season these with salt and pepper, just lay these in. Very hot pan. Once you get the scallops placed on the spoons, we're going to top them with a little bit of the corn avocado salsa. Just a little bit on the top is all you need, because that heat from the jalapeno, we don't want to cover up the delicate flavor of the scallop. Top these off with a little bit of fried corn tortillas, a little haystack in the middle, and drizzle a little bit of olive oil over this, just a little bit to add just a little bit of moisture. Cool. Let's take these to the bar and we'll talk about why we chose this spoon. Everything looks and smells great. Why don't we recap what we've done, Lonnie? Today we've got an imperial shrimp roll with a garlic chili hot sauce and a pan seared scallop with a corn and avocado salsa. And yeah, this is really cool the way you serve this. You put it right in a spoon so it's easy to eat. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, I went ahead and got some ham hocks and collard greens gear so when you get to the party, you got some ready to eat. Now coming up next in the dinner segment, we're going to be making roasted rack of lamb with a hominy casserole. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks for coming back, and no, you're not seeing double. It's my brother, John Castro from Sullivan College. We're here to do the dinner derby segment. Now, we're going to do three things. We're going to make a Kentucky salad. We're going to do a roasted rack of lamb with hominy, and we're going to put some ice cream on bourbon balls. And the funnest thing I think we're going to do is the salad to start with, and it's got an ingredient that is very dear to me. John turned me on to it about three years ago, and it's been around forever. It's called Green, Green Goddess, Goddess dressing. dressing. There we go. And we've got some tomatoes, some boiled new red potatoes, some boiled eggs, um, some country ham from Father's Farm, and we've also got some asparagus. Some of the ingredients for the Green Goddess dressing, we've got some chopped parsley, some chopped chives, some minced garlic. We've also got some anchovy paste, some sour cream, mayonnaise, a little tarragon and tarragon vinegar, salt, pepper, and a little lemon. Right now we already have the um, mayonnaise and the sour cream in the bowl, so I'm going to add the tarragon and the tarragon vinegar. I'm going to add the minced garlic. I'm going to add the anchovy paste. I'm going to add the chopped parsley, the chopped chives, lemon juice, and a little salt and pepper just to finish it with. Now we'll need to adjust the seasoning at the end as well. And this particular dressing might need a little thinning with a little water. Now all we need to do is combine all these things together. So we've taken some romaine. I, everybody loves all those mescaline mixes anymore. But whatever happened to romaine, it's beautiful. Let's eat a great salad with that. We're going to take all of our ingredients and just dump them right in. And we're going to take some of the green goddess dressing. Yummy. And we're going to mix that up. A real winning bed for this salad is to finish it with a little roasted corn um, chow chow. Some people know it as corn relish. It's a real winner on this salad. This is pure Kentucky. That is pure Kentucky, John. And I can't say it enough. Green goddess dressing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely perfect. Now let's get over to the stove where I'm going to make some lamb, and it's real simple. Now after a big salad with anchovies, green goddess dressing, we need to get something that really stands up to it. We're going to use some lamb today. It's beautiful lamb. They've been Frenched. You can see the eye right there. Something you want to make sure you ask your butcher is make sure the chine bone is cut off. That way we'll be able to slice this. To get the ball rolling, we need to season our lamb. Never forget to season. That what makes us different than the air guys. In a hot skillet, we're going to add some olive oil, about a tablespoon. Then we're going to take our rib and lay it in the saute pan. And it's been about three, four minutes, and what we're looking for is caramelization. It's going to be important to our sauce making here later. Now that these are caramelized all over, we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven at 400 degrees and cook them to your desired temperature. We're going to make a hominy casserole to go along with our lamb. All we need to do is start with the cast iron skillet, a little bit of bacon grease, or you could use some olive oil, and start with your onions. We're going to sweat these onions till they become transparent, season them with the salt and pepper. Now we'll add our hominy. And then we're going to add our tomato sauce. 
We're going to let the tomato sauce come to a boil. Then we're going to make like a Provencal mix with breadcrumbs, cornbread, mint, and rosemary. To finish this, we've got um, the Parmesan cheese and the breadcrumbs together. So now we're going to add the herbs to it. We've got a little mint, a little rosemary, some garlic, and a little oil. Season with salt and pepper. And then we're just going to toss it all together. What we want to do now is just take this and really liberally sprinkle it all over the top. Make sure you coat it pretty well. If it's not even, you can always spread it out with a spoon. Now we're going to put this in the very hot oven where our lamb is coming out right now. And we're going to bake this until it gets golden brown. Now we're going to make our sauce. First, we're going to take our lamb out of our pan kind of let those bad boys rest. You can see we've rendered quite a bit of fat into our pan. Pour about half of that off very slowly. You want to keep all that caramelization in the bottom of the pan. And we're going to make our sauce. Now we're going to get our pan up to medium heat and we're going to do a real quick sauce. It's called a la minute. Very simple. In a minute. So we're going to take some shallots, go right into the pan. Once they pick up a nutty brown character like this, we're going to deglaze with some red wine. That's going to bring all that caramelization up off the bottom. Okay, we've reduced our red wine down to where it's just like a syrup. And at this point, we're going to add our chicken stock. Now we've reduced this until it's kind of sticky. At this point, we're going to take a little bit of butter and finish this sauce. Let's say two tablespoons. And then we'll put it right on top of our lamb. Okay, that's it. We've got our hominy casserole. We've got our beautiful lamb. And the sauce is ready. Now we can go ahead and look at dessert. We're going to make bourbon balls with vanilla ice cream with a little bit of bourbon and banana toppings. The first thing we're going to use is some vanilla wafer crumbs. Could use old dry yellow cake as well. But we need to add those to the bowl first. Next we're going to add the powdered sugar, a little powdered cocoa, some chopped pecans, a little Cairo syrup just to get them moistened. All right, the next thing we're going to do is moisten this with a little bourbon. So we're going to take some of the bourbon, and this may vary a little bit. But you want to take it, add a little bit, really kind of work it in, almost like making a graham cracker crust. And now we just need to form these into balls. Now all you need is the ice cream. Put a nice quenelle of ice cream on top. Now stay tuned because coming up, we're going into my house. We're all going to get around the table and we'll review everything we've done today. Stay tuned. Welcome to my kitchen. I thought this would be the perfect place to review what John and I did for dinner. Why don't we belly up to this stove and I'll show you what we've done, John. So many of you have asked, Chef, what's your kitchen like? Well, this is it. It's really simple. I've got the Ultramatic sitting right here. It's like a retro vehicle. We've got some new pans for tires. And of course, you're the engine that makes this whole thing run. Now, what we made, for, this is our entree. This is a hominy casserole with roasted lamb. And from here, We'll talk about our salad and our dessert. John, what do we have for salad? And we chose a Kentucky salad to accompany the lamb dish. We've got asparagus, radishes, new red potatoes, hard boiled eggs, some country ham, and corn relish. And of course, green goddess dressing. The next thing that we have are some bourbon balls, and we're just gonna end the meal with that. And these are bourbon balls with a little vanilla ice cream, some bananas, and some caramel glaze. Top it off with mint, and you've got a fine dessert. John, let's join the rest of the family out in the dining room. I'd like to take this time to thank Lonnie, my brother-in-law, for that wonderful cash flow entertaining package. John, thanks for a great dinner, and Kathleen for that special brunch. I hope these recipes help you survive Derby, as we say in the business. I'm Chef Joe. Take a risk. Get back in the kitchen. Have a great Derby. Have a great Derby. <laughs> now, if you'd like a copy of these recipes, you can write me at the Brown Hotel, 335 West Broadway, Louisville, Kentucky, 40202. Or you can look on your computer at whs11.com and just look for the icon Chef Joe. <laughs> ah, see. That's a that high tech cleaning right there. Green, Green goddess, goddess dressing. dressing. There we go. God, more nasal than usual. That's a okay. <laughs> Sounds good. That's a okay. <laughs> Sounds good. That's a okay. <laughs> Sounds good. John, I don't know about you, but I love to say Green Goddess. Me too. So let's say it again Green Goddess. Goddess. <laughs> All right. I'm going to sneeze now. That is pure Kentucky, John, and I can't say it enough. Green goddess God dressing. <laughs> oh, I was going to sneeze, okay. I don't think the frame's wide enough to get your head in there. <laughs> I was thinking that. Okay. 
This stuff <laughs> is your head. It scared me. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just looking. We may have to do this five or six times. Yeah, this is really cool. You put this in a spoon so you can eat it. Put the spoon away. You're off. This is too long for us, isn't it? <laughs> Let's recap what we've done, Lonnie. We got an imperial shrimp roll today with a garlic chili uh, hot sauce and hand seared scallop. Oh, that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that. Don't make me mad. That was the one.